fashion revolution. We're a support group for indie designers, fashion designers that care about the earth. So the challenge this month is to do something that is retail ready. My name is Ayşe Gül Ikna, but everybody calls me Ayşe. It's the short version of my full name. Um, I am actually originally from Turkey. For this project, I was thinking about using the leather and I see like a lot of leather jackets everywhere. You see people buying and the style is out of the style. The color is different and or it's too big or too short or, you know, people donating. And so I've been collecting, trying to collect those denims. And those are the pieces that I'm going to be taking apart and creating, building some, you know, tops and skirts. The idea is that futuristic and dark, vision so my colors are one color sets in that scheme so it makes it a little bit easier you know it's just that you can find fabric color tones that matches with those so that's was the for the fall ideas that i've been building and and making pieces and first stage is the pattern and then slowly slowly in finding the fabrics i feel like it's a super super stylish like it's um it takes the risks which i think is something that a higher end clientele would like and to me it's it's very boutique it's not something you'd see at the craft fair is like my denim um it's very um i feel like it's very high end it's a uh it looks like a very well put together very stylish woman yeah hey, so i do love the concept of it and I applaud her for using different kinds of fabric in a one chain because I haven't used it that. Yeah, I've always wanted to uh, create a, a range that is, that's, you know, it's affordable for most people. These fabrics, uh, so where the blue is, the continental quilt goes in instead, and then the stripes are the, are the rolled up jeans that you see at the top of each of those. Oh, I see. Yeah. I see. So you've done several sets here is what you're giving us. So each um, continental quilt, that's the big puffy part. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the, it's, the continental quilt is where the dark blue uh, is on the on the mock vest. So that's going to be the main body of the of the vest. And then the three stripes are the rolled up jeans. Oh, beside it. nice. Yes. All of those rows are individually stuffed. And each row is a different pair of jeans, actually. Well, I love your design, um, and I hope you pick one instead of attempting to do all of them, because that's just No, like... I'm going to do five. I have to. It's a range. I would be surprised if you don't have people lining up to buy it. I think it's very modern, and it looks sort of like some things that I've seen Patagonia doing with their upcycles, and they have a lot of oh, really? to test okay. market what they're doing. And so I feel like, oh, you know, you're, you're on to something. So I already have an existing retailer. You know, so they'll either go online or, or to the other retailer or... Yeah. Um, what percent do they take when you sell something through them? They take 30% of the retail price. So you could, like, some galleries take 40%, which is, makes it quite difficult for artists because if they sell direct, then it still needs to be that high price. You know, it's kind of... It's a bit strange. So I'm thinking of doing something like this, where I use fabric scraps in the top half and uh, larger chunks of denim, like the, the bottom with the pocket here and there in the back to make a circle skirt. And then um, some of the scraps from cutting all of that out, the smaller scraps that are too small for the bodice, I want to make flowers with. I'm not going to do the fringe edge. So uh, my customer is 16 to 25 years old. She's an outdoorsy type. I'm thinking of craft fairs both in Boulder and Denver. These are the materials that I'm working from. And um, I'm using denim because it's incredibly wasteful. Google says that it's 18,000 gallons of water for one pair of jeans. This is just a kind of a garish piece of cotton that I'm gonna use for the lining in the bodice. I think it'll be a very fun lining but I wouldn't want that on the outside of my garden. Um, and some of the, the, a lot of the flowers that I'm gonna do, like in the design, you can see it has flowers. Uh, a lot of the designs I make out of the really small scraps. Like you can see there are piles here that are really not even long enough for the bodice. And Ooh. that is my design plan for this challenge. So I, I just laughed when you said that's the plan. It's like it, all of us creative people, the, the pathway can definitely turn depending on 
what you thought you were going to do and and how it's working and new ideas that come along the way, which um, sometimes can be powerful. So I was thinking for this time around that I was going to use a fabric that is like shed like and then change it into a dress, but then use a contradicting fabric for the lower part of the dress. I'll be using this like white fabric and then there's like this shirt like it's nice so there's little part that I can use and those parts I'll use it for the top alone and then I'll add something like a skirt (laughs) with like the top I'm going to use the stripes and then for the bottom I'm going to use white I was thinking of adding something else, maybe a black fabric, just to bring them both together as a belt. But I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm still like on the designing plan. It's going to be a little above the knees. It's not going to be that long as I don't have much fabric to work with. It's going to be a fitted skirt. Uh, My customer can range from um, teen to an adult as the um, the materials are lightweight, so they're not heavy even for like old people and they are not as exposing. So they anyone can wear them. Um, and this will be good for church or a picnic. It's very light um, outfit. I don't have much connection to retail stores as I would like currently. So pop-up stores are the best. I'm going to start with a basic dress. The main idea of it is that I'm going to use bathroom set that I had, the shower curtain and all the pieces, and I'm going to make that wearable. Super cool. Um, bathroom shower curtains have no stretch. <laughs> so I have to have to keep that in mind because I, my body type needs stretch. <laughs> So that's that's going to be the challenge to make it be able to go around a hippie person and and the fit is going to be important. So who's going to wear the thing that you're going to make with this dress and the curtain? So what kind of customer do you have in mind? I kind of see it as somewhat of a kind of a special event, something, something that's um, going to be displayed at a cultural event. Now, in terms of where you're going to sell it, do you have any ideas about that yet? So I'm kind of maybe intimidated to out there in the marketplace. So I, I'm probably going to stick with online. I was a um, seller of, of jewelry. That's kind of where I'm at too. Mm-hmm. Uh, stockpiling things and then trying to figure out what next steps look like. I will utilize some old leather jackets to design. So I find a few, I took it apart and I tried it and I realized that the machine that I was doing, which is I have it like, you know, you know, industrial machine, but it just didn't, the leather was so thick, so heavy. It just couldn't work when you're together combining leather and the other pieces together. And so I went back to the, you know, Goodville and thrift shop. So I saw a dress that is one side of a kind of fabric, but it looks like almost like not a letter. I wouldn't say exactly like it, but it's kind of similar looking letter. So they used it on the back of it and the front was a nice silk and had the lining. So I says, perfect. Back of the fabric, I used it for the piece, the area that I wanted to make it look like leather. And the other part of the design, so I I had this long skirt that I wanted to give it like nice side slips and everything. And I couldn't find a fabric um, for that long. So what I did, I combined the fabric. So I said like, you know what, I am going to put it on the behind the fabric. And when I do a stitch it so that my connection of the fabric, you won't be able to see it. So I stitched those and give this like, you know, kind of like um you know comforter looking kind of stitches i did so i gave the little heaviness to you know the skirt and the side of the fabric because the the i wanted to look a little heavier like a leather piece right so and it turned out to be nice so i did a little um at first i thought i was gonna do like a little pocket in the front 
But then, you know, you know what I said? I want something that, you know, you put your hands and you get your hands warm, not like you're like, put your hands this way. So something from the side. So instead of holding it, I put it on the skirt <laughs> to give a little more comfort. And then, you know, very, I thought it was very appealing look for someone who can, you know, show their legs. So I think my styles gets really influenced by New York City because where I lived for about 30 years, this is only the one piece of the collection because I'm building a collection for the event that I'm attending, Atlanta Sustainable Fashion Week. And that's what I came with the name, like the Nomad in the New World or the Modern World Nomad, uh, kind of um, the idea, the whole idea came. Well, when you said New York, I can totally see that. Like, yeah, that's a New Yorker's outfit for sure. <laughs> okay, well, tell, tell me, um, how long did it take you to make? When we first started talking about the project, I started making the patterns first. So the, the pattern part is the part that is takes the longer because, you know, you know, I think I use the bedding sheets, that old bedding sheets to do the, my sample. So that's like takes like a week or maybe two, you know, depends on how fast you work. <laughs> then meantime, I was always searching for the fabric. Putting it together is basically a day or two for sewing it. So the, the top will go probably between 180 to 250 and then the skirt is about the like you know same range and because these are like like i said and it's a one-of-a-kind pieces uh, i think it's a reasonable price to someone who wants to look different unique and then in quality you know we have this sample cost which is a higher cost and then all the production co you know production cost so the I think the production cost will be uh, a lot shorter time frame because the pattern is done, the fabric is sort, everything is done. You just need to cut it and sew it, right? If you put it on hourly rate, it's not that it's high. It's more challenging and it's more interesting to be an upcycle designer. I look at it this way, you know, if you have the resources and you got all the money to buy the, the fine silk and satin I think your piece is going to look no matter what is pretty unless you're really a bad designer but there's no <laughs> such designer because they have the top resources to to put it together a show and or the piece with this and then top tailors you know because I never consider myself like fully because the tailoring is another art sometimes people don't understand how much work that is done for those uh, you know, those high quality pieces because those tailoring is cost a lot and, you know, those fabrics are very expensive. So, you know, they do what they do is great. But for us, it's like small designers, just, we have to get more creative. Uh, originally, I was going to make the upcycled, the puffer vests that are made from denim. Um, and, then it, and then it got really warm over here. And so, you know, the puffer vest for winter. So I thought, oh, this is a good time to try a dress design that I've had in mind uh, for a couple of years. And so I spent four days doing that with like probably three or four different configurations. And yeah. this was the I, event that you were on um, the gallery that you're showing uh, the pieces in right now. Is that right? Yeah, it is. So it's a because those particular garments are quite uh, flowy and they've, they've got a peekaboo shoulder, so you need to... I'm going to take a mannequin in because they, they, they don't look like much, just hanging, but once they're on, they, they fall really lovely. So they're made out of silk scarves. And it's, oh, yeah, peekaboo shoulder, it's quite lovely. It drapes wonderfully. So that's the dress. That is the dress. So I added to that and it came down to, like, you know, just below your knee. But I ended up, I just, I didn't like it. So I ended up just pulling it apart and making it that crop top. I wish I had it because at the opening night, there were a couple of women who pulled up that short, the short version, the crop version of it, and were like, oh, if only it was just a bit longer or, oh, I'd like it in the knee. And I was, you know, I could have solved the design I didn't like twice over at least. So I, I applaud you for honoring your own design aesthetic, but I also applaud you for venturing into and thinking about what has commercial value when you're making it. And that really is the heart of this challenge. So I think that you should always stick to your design and then if like, people love it, they will love you. 
And I guess um, a way to deal with that is just put it out there anyway and see what the market does, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, Let's talk about your piece and how long it took you to make, like, one of the pieces and what your hourly is. I forgot to ask you about that. charge out at, at $30, $30 an hour for us here. And for international jobs, it's more. It ends up being $50 an hour. So um, that ends up being an okay price for the American currency. Like when I sent something to New York, she thought, oh, wow, I'm getting a bargain. And I was just like, oh, whoa, with the exchange rate? Like, cool, I want to sell to New York people. It's not just an hourly rate. when Because I see my pieces more as art than, than fashion. And they're very one-off. And so, uh, you know, in the art world, things aren't priced by an hourly rate. They're, they're basically priced with how beautiful they are or how rare they are. I think that you have a great point. I think selling in a gallery, selling in an artistic situation is is much better for an uh, upcycle, recycle type designer because so many of our pieces are one of a kind. And I've been thinking craft fairs, which is it's just a much lower end market. And I'm thinking that partly because I'm working with denim. So Shelly, you're a huge inspiration to me because you do denim couture and you do like oh, artistic, you. You, you treat your art as art. So thank you for doing that. Yeah. Okay, so at first, as you know, that I was going to do a black and white space and I changed it because it wasn't going to cover the whole body. So I decided to change it into this space since it's summer already, it's very hot and it could be very nice for a brown dress. So I was using my body as a pattern. I, I just like took out the... Um, the measurements and I started the process right there. The problems was with from this like shoulder up to the because like when I did the measurements they were just too big so the dress was like a bit flappy and I had to readjust it and outside. So um the um the designing and the seeing of the dress wasn't as hard and it didn't take as much. The problem was because they had to be very um precise and the the other problem that I had with the dress that I didn't figure out as well as, as fast is that when I did like the two front pieces I did them facing the same direction so which said I had to like do them all over again the other way so all in all it took me about three to four hours I would charge for it um about a hundred range maybe I would make a day maybe I might make um, 300 to like 400. And I'm going to sell it at a pop-up market in the CTM. Well, I think that the design is a wonderful classic style that lots of people would want to have in their wardrobe. So I think it's very, very sellable. And uh, the color that you chose is beautiful too. I think you might be undervaluing your time. Either that or Google's not converting RANDs for me very effectively. So um, good luck with it, Nandamiso. This is kind of what my outfit looked like. And my friend's daughter is not the right size for this dress. She's uh, 12 in the waist, but she's like tall and super skinny and doesn't have a bust. <laughs> and I did make... <laughs> I did make the dress in a standard dress size, just thinking it would be more likely the right size. So there she is holding it together. And I'm not sure if this is landing to the left on her because she's pulled it around. <laughs> but I, I intended the label to fall in the back. There's actually a pocket in the dress that's on the front that I forgot to have her stick her hand in. There it is. So it's, and this is the inside oh, cool. of the bus. So I had to... Uh, in my That's donation pile, I had two little fabrics that I could never imagine putting on the outside of something, but I thought they made good lining. And I did end up using some of the flowers in the neckline. In the original design, it had uh, some up here and some down there. This label was meant to line up with the backbone, so it's a little bit closer to there, but it is an asymmetrical design with a single strap. And that's one side, the other side has a zipper on it. So this took me 13 hours and 25 minutes, uh, which is about normal for me, at minimum wage in the States. 
that would be $166.32. And there were a few costs of material. This is all thrift store costs. So um, sourcing some, well, boning I source new, but four pair of jeans at $5 each is $20. A zipper from a coat is about $10 for the coat. The lining, I just put a dollar in for that. So to make even on this dress for my time would be almost $200. Yeah, I don't think it's a retail garment at that price um, point and in the design that it's in. I feel like mm, not quite. Um, I didn't have quite enough um, denim with the original denim pieces I showed you last month. So I had to add a pair of pants. I had fun putting the bodice together. That was my favorite part. When I put the skirt together and I laid the flowers on it, it just seemed like there was too much going on with these stripes to have the flowers also. I um, thought about making it a little less busy by using a denim that was the same color. I saw I could like that more, but I didn't want to take the extra time to rework the skirt. So instead, I just I got rid of those on the back. When we were talking about our design aesthetic versus commercial, I really like this ragged look, but I think it's not very accessible to most people. Like the piece that I made um, previously, that's just a basic jumper, was um, something that people just responded a lot more to when I when I posted on Facebook and stuff like that. So I kind of use Facebook posts as a little bit of a test market, but I don't think it appeals as much to other people. How do you test market, you guys? Oh, absolutely. Social media and, and and friends, you know, people I know like networking. Like, and so to get their feedback is really valuable. And um, yeah, I guess that didn't happen with the dress I didn't like. Like I, I tried it on a couple of people and it wasn't what they liked. It's not, it wasn't their style either. And so I didn't get that. I, I, I missed that feedback of, oh, this is great, which is what usually happens. Usually people are like, wow, that's amazing, you know, and so I didn't get that off the dress, so I felt a bit like, nah. <laughs> yeah, so it made you not like it more when your friends weren't as responsive to it. Yeah, well, it actually made me think that no one's going to like it. Like, yeah. literally, I thought no one's going to like it, and yeah, because I don't really like it either, you know, but I should have just tried it. What was difficult about it was... Um, the placement, number one, the putting her in the center of the outfit made me have, when I cut her out, I had less fabric to work with. Well, I think it laid really beautifully. And I loved it when um, it was in the elegant, in the, I love how reversible it is inside, uh -huh. outside. And the, <laughs> the black garment on the inside also laid really nice and looked really good. So very mm -hmm. well done. Uh, I wanted to add more design touch to it, but after I saw that if I do anything, I'm going to distort it. So I'll just leave it. I felt like it was going to be too plain and simple. <laughs> so I didn't want to distort it. So I'm like, I'm going to just go with, go with the flow. Just kind I of think you have to honor a, a bold print like that. But the colors were lovely in it. Yeah, it fit, it fit well on her. Is that, did you say it's a shower cushion? On my side, I really love the bag. Yo, I really love the foot bag. I see myself carrying that around. And as for the dress, I see a lot of women around here wearing it because it's very beautiful. The silhouette of the African lady, it's a very beautiful concept and design. How long did it take you to do, and related to that, is what price point would you put on it? I really think that project could have came out in about six or seven hours. Yeah. Okay. So how are you going to price your piece now? Now, I ne that's where my problem has, has always been. I never knew how to price a garment. What's the minimum wage for your state? But I, I don't think it's very much. I think it's eight something. You're right. It is low. It's 930 an hour there. You could do it in six hours, but it was closer to like eight or 10, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so 10 times 10, so that's $100. And see, no, I would never price that at that because I would I would feel I wouldn't pay $100 for that. I would price it probably at about $50 or $60. And, and everything's gone up so high, the material, the thread, the needle, the everything. Totally. It's, it's like you're not going to get you're not going to get what you put into a garment. And you wouldn't even be making um, minimum wage. Do you feel like it's something you can wear in different weathers? You will wear it, won't you? You're probably not going to sell yeah. it. You're probably going to wear it because you look fabulous in it, right? Well, 
Thank you. Thank you. It did come out. I did love it after it came. I'm like, it came just out, just like it did in my, in my imagination. Thanks so much for joining us for Fashion Revolution. If you liked what we did and you'd like to know more about it, check out our playlist. We have all kinds of great info shares and other challenges and everything that uh, could be helpful to designers running their businesses.